Welcome. Welcome to another Raider Nation Unlimited. I'm your man, Wasted Talent. What is the deal, everybody? Shout out some salutations to the chat. Um, listen, it, it's been a while. It has been a while. It, it has been a um a, a very, very eventful offseason. You know, in the wasted household, it's been a lot going on. A lot going on. Shout out to salutations to everybody in the chat. But it has not been missed on me that the great and powerful Wasted Talent has not come on Raider Nation Unlimited and keep the momentum going over at Raider Nation Unlimited, man. So shout out to everybody who's pulling up, man. Yo, salute to everybody in the room, man. Salute to everybody on Twitter, everybody on YouTube. Listen, tell a friend to tell a friend. Get wasted with your brother wasted. Share this thing out on all social media. But listen, we have a lot to talk about, everybody. My guy, Martin is in the place. Good evening, Wasted. Chip, chip, cheerio to Martin from way, way across the pond. My man Lawrence E is in the place to be. Oh, my God. Terry Ogden is in here, man. Terry Ogden. Terry High Stakes Ogden. Listen, I knew what you were trying to say. Don't worry about the spell check, my brother. My brother Thor is in the place. Raider Nation Drinking Club. My dog, whatever we do, it has to work. Good with trading back or up. So floor, yo, Thor is, is fluid. Thor is fluid. I'm fluid right now with, with my decision making with the Raiders too. Chris, four Raiders in the place. Ray Cates, can't wait for this season to start. I know we as Raider fans always say that, but this year has a different vibe. Let's go Raiders all day, every day. Shout out to my dog, man, Ruben Rocho. Oh, my God, man. Raider Mac is in the place, man. The real Raider Bat Dad is in the place, man. Damn, man. Huncho 707 is in the place. Richard Duhosk is in the place, man. Alpha Omega's in here. Eagle Terry and Apocalypse. Oh, the gang's all here, everybody. The gang is all here. Brother Wasted is here. So, guys, my guy, Big Mike, is in the place. Finally caught the show live. Big Mike, thank you, bro. Great to see everybody. So, all right, guys, listen. Let's get to it. Let's get effing to it. Guys, we got over 200 in the room right now. But, guys, let's start the show off, man. There have been rumors. There have been things that have been afoot in Raider Nation today. And it is music to my ears and your ears. People are saying in a report, off of CBS News, man, that the Raiders could make a splash in the 2024 NFL Draft. Las Vegas is exploring a possible trade-up in the first round per reports. Now, guys, this is per reports. The information is out there. Let's dig into it, man. The 2024 Draft will be Tom Telesco's first one with the Las Vegas Raiders, and it looks like the team's new general manager is looking to make a splash. According to The Athletic, the Raiders want to trade up in the first round, and they're currently exploring what it might take to make that happen. The Raiders currently hold the 13th overall pick, and ideally, they like to move up into the 5-7 range, according to reports. If Telesco decides to make a move up the board, it sounds like Antonio Pierce would definitely approve of the decision. The Raiders' new coach was asked about a possible trade up at the combine, and he sounded like he was all for it. Guys, man. I'm loving what I'm hearing. I'm going to get, get done reading this article for you guys. If the Raiders do trade up, it wouldn't be surprising to see them target a quarterback. Right now, top four quarterbacks in the draft are Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Drake May, and J.J. McCarthy. Although two of those quarterbacks are expected to go within the first top two picks, there's a good chance at least one of them will still be available if the Raiders were able to move to the fifth overall pick. 
If the Raiders do draft a quarterback, Pierce made it clear that he wants the QB on the field as soon as possible. I hope whoever we draft, and that's the route we go, that's who the starter becomes, Pierce said. You don't want to put a Band-Aid at that position. That's old. That's old, man. I think the Raiders, we've seen that enough as this organization. Now, guys, let, let's get to it. Now, I'm going to tell you something. If the Raiders do move up in the draft and the Raiders do take a quarterback. Now, you guys know I've been talking about this all offseason, who I think that they should draft, right? But if they take a quarterback early, that guy is going to be the starter. You know, like when, when I talk about, you know, competition, if if there was an inkling that the Raiders thought in their infinite wisdom that they would go with a Caleb Williams and they brought in two journeymen to compete with him, I, I can stomach that. But them drafting a rookie high, and I'm not talking about the third round or the fourth, I'm talking about first round pick. When you draft a quarterback that high, the organization has to do everything that they can to make sure that said rookie is successful. They have to. They, you know, it, it, it would be almost organizational practice for that not to be that. It would be organizational malpractice for it to not be that. They have to do everything they can. So what that means is there's no competition. You got that kid. You're getting him ready. You're tailoring the team to his skill set. And what you're also doing is you're giving him first team snaps, first team reps. And it makes a difference. Now, if we see what happened with Aiden O'Connell this last past season, he didn't get the first team reps. He didn't get all of that. He had to take mental reps most of the time. And you see that as the season progressed, he got a lot better because he got the snaps. But if he would have gotten that in the offseason, I think that the, the, the result might have been substantially and markedly better let me get to the chat man me let me pete get to the chat peace to everybody in the place to be we got over 300 in room get wasted with your brother wasted where the hell is everybody where is everybody <laughs> my guys man but let me get to these man my guy we got a new member man my guy richard do 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 shock Became a new member. Welcome to the Raider, Race of Town Army, man. Pop your collar, man. My God. Huncho, 707, became a new member. Shout out to you, man. You could, look, the Race of Town Army has grown in droves, man. My God, Skylar Milstead. What's up, Wasted? Hope you and your family are blessed. Thank you for the great content, man. Thank you for being a, a member of this channel. Thank you for always supporting this channel, brother. Appreciate you, dog. Thank you for pulling up, man. We got right here. Man, the great M. Goshal with the $2 holler. If you ask me, Penix is the best QB in his draft. Hey, yo, if you ask me, I would say the same thing, bro. If you ask me for what we need, he... Look, I like Michael Penix. You guys know that. You know what I'm saying? But I can see somebody wanting us to take Jaden Daniels. I, listen, my, Penix, Daniels, Caleb Williams, those three guys, I, you're not going to get a complaint out of me from any of those guys. J.J. McCarthy is more of a project, but he has elite talent somewhere in that archetype. I have no problem with that. I have no problem with that. Now, let me get to some of these, man. You could tell CTE ESPN has a lot more followers than a month ago. Last month, he said the same thing about the Raiders and the Patriots. No one talked about it. Now it's everywhere. Yeah, yo, listen, let's get into it, man. Let's get into it. Yo, Antonio Brown, bro, is out there making predictions nobody thought what he was saying was legitimate but i'm here to tell you man antonio brown is a guy who had a legendary career in the national football league he's played in these places he has relationships maybe there could be some legitimacy man but you know it's funny man because it's almost like the boy who cried wolf right it's hard to find truth in a guy who's so erratic right a guy who says a lot of outlandish things. It's very, very hard to find your truth in, in, in what a guy like that is saying. So I can see people dismissing Antonio Brown. But let me tell you something, man. Yo, he, he hit some of the, these moves right on the nose, man. He hit some right on the nose. Maybe we need to tune in to CTE ESPN, man. But F Antonio Brown, man. To be honest, to be honest with you, man. F him. My guy Cap, gifting five Raider Nation Unlimited Wasted Town memberships, man. Appreciate you, bro. But always supporting the channel, Cap. You are the freaking man, yo. The real Raider Bad Dad. Thank you, man, for the $5 holler. Hello, good sir. Utmost respect for what you do for the nation. Not sure if you saw Mitch's show. 
but you need to teach him respect for his elders. Shout out to my guy, the real Raider Bad Dad. Yeah, man, listen. Yo, it was nasty work over there, man. It was nasty work. I saw Mitch's content create a draft. I hope you guys tuned in. I hope you saw a lot of the picks that were made. And I saw the banter. And I saw the banter from Mitch. Mitch, you bastard you. Mitch, you bitch you. I saw it. It's nasty work. This man sandwiched me in between a tornado of testicle talk. He talked about ball bag cancer. He talked and then, then went right into a manscape ad before he announced my pick. So Mitchell Renz, you mother effer you. I am going to get you back. Me and Mitch have this friendly beef going on. And he knows how freaked out I get when Mitch goes full uh, Diddy on me. Mitch, don't please, don't ever go full Diddy again, man. It's unbelievable, Mitch. The F out of here. My dog Graf is in a place to be. <laughs> Said my guy got me ready to do another live tonight. Hey, man, listen, brother, you already know. You already know. Yeah, but Mitch, Mitch is going, Mitch, man, it's nasty work up in here, man. This guy is the DePaul's master out this mother effer. But Mitch, let me tell you something. You bit you. Mitch, payback is hell. <laughs> payback is hell, Mitch. <laughs> so what did y'all think about the draft, though, man? I'm going to run it down for you. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, listen, I I'm going to be honest with you. You know, listen, a lot of times I, I, I want to make sure that I am not being totally biased, right? But if you ask me, if I mean, if, you know, if you ask me, I think graphic and myself, myself and graphic had the two best picks in the draft. I, 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 I mean, come on. I mean, so at pick number one, graph hits it out of the park. It's a home run. Terry and Arnold with the first with the first pick uh, at round two, my guy Sanji. Taking Bo Nix. Now, look, I can see how Sanji could do something like that. I think we need a quarterback. He is one of the better young quarterbacks in this draft. I wouldn't have taken him. I would have taken Penix. But if Sanji likes Bo Nix, shout out to Sanji. With the third round pick, the great and powerful wasted talent picks, Peyton Wilson linebacker. I'm telling y'all, man. I'm telling y'all right now, man. If that were to happen, bro, I think I might do a damn backflip, man. And yo, and, and, and not for nothing, man, circling back to the Sanjeet thing, right? There have been rumors the whole draft cycle that Tom Telesco really loves Bo Nix. And if if you look at Bo Nix, you know, Bo Nix is a guy who is a polarizing figure. Now, you have some people that have said some, some things about, you know, him handling pressure and all that other stuff. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. I think it's the offseason. People need things to talk about. People are trumping that 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 trope up. I think that's kind of bullshit. I think all Bo Nix did was talk about the difference between the Pac-10 and playing at Oregon, playing in the SEC. And anybody that has family in the South, has been in the South, has went to school in the South, um, understand how ravenous it is in college towns. You have places where these colleges are where the entire 30, 40 mile radius is built around said school. You have a lot of states that don't have professional sports or didn't back in the day. And they grew up, you know, like, you know, Alabama first, you know. And I'm going to be honest with you, man. Auburn, a school like Auburn, man, look, Alabama, the University of Alabama and Auburn, listen, man, that's all there is. There are no professional sports teams in Alabama, y'all. So I understand what Bo Nix was saying. I don't think that that means he can't handle pressure. I think that's that's a, a, a an adverse reach, and I, and I think that yo he's a guy that can be successful at the next level. Playing the pro style offense, uh, probably took the he took the most snaps ever in college football. The guy is ready to roll, man. And even Antonio Pierce, from what I understand, um, and I, this comes from Heavy on Raiders. Shout out to um, Heavy on Raiders, but they quoted Antonio Pierce. He goes, um, you look at Bo Nix, and I mean. What is it? 61 career starts? Come on, man. That's crazy. Played against Justin Herbert. So if you grab a kid like that, he's done that already. And that's the that's a fact, bro. This is a guy that can come in and hit the ground running. He's accurate. He's a guy who 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 is a system guy. So that's good. A lot of offensive coordinators like system guys. They like guys that are malleable. They like guys that have the skill set that travels. 
So I have no problem with, with us taking Bo Nix. I, would I prefer us to take Penix or someone else? Yes. But if we wound up with Bo Nix, hopefully not in the first round. If we took Bo Nix in the second round, I would not be angry about that. I'm telling you right now, man. I'm telling you right now. Let me get to some of these supers, man. I'm getting a little behind right here. My guy, Joe Capital Ramos with the $5 holler, man. Seeing AB be right about things is like your ops giving you good advice. Throws me off like crazy. That is a fact, bro. That is a fact. Not to jump, to jump back to the A B thing, man. But my God, man. Listen, man. I look, bro. I I think Antonio Brown might be my most hated former Raider. Like more so than Warren Sapp, because at least Warren Sapp gave us some seasons. At least Randy Moss suited up for the Raiders. This fucking guy, man, is to me. The Antichrist of Raider Nation. I can't effing stand Antonio Brown. Effing bum. It's an effing bum. My God, Skylar Mills said full diddy. <laughs> Shout out to y'all, man. Bobby Clark, what's good, Wasted? Thank you and Graf for helping me and others get through our days. Bobby Clark, man, it's been our pleasure to do that, my brother. Yo, we got almost 500 in the room. Get wasted with your brother, Wasted. The real Raider Bad Dad. Do a punked like show with real old men that are gym freaks act like they're going to jump him, and then they pop up and say, respect your elders. Nah, man, Mitch respects his elders, man. It's all good, man. It's all love. Shout out to my guy, Mitchell Renz, man. That is the Manscaped Maven over there, man. The F is going on with this guy over there. My two cents. Almost wish the Raiders draft Knicks to show those not in the know what's up. Look, this is the thing, man. It's the thing. Guys, you, you got to understand something, man. There's only a few guys in this draft, man, that are, are, are draftable quarterbacks that are in the top two rounds, right? Bo Nix happens to be one of them, guys. And and I, I'm going to be for real with you, man. It, it's people, places, and things. If we go out there and we get a, 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 a cornerstone piece in the trenches as far as an offensive lineman in the first round, a cornerback, you know, something, somebody that is a, a starter day one, an effective starter, a guy that addresses a need forevermore for, for the next three to four years, right? And then we are lucky enough to wind up with the, with a second tier guy, such as a Bo Nix, such because, you know, the, the first tier, as everyone is saying, is, you know, Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Drake May, and or J.J. McCarthy, whichever way you like to slice it, right? But then that second tier, guys, if you wind up with a second tier guy like that in the second round, that is that's a home run. That's a home run because you got to understand the Raiders are not in a situation where they need their quarterback to carry the whole team right now. The Raiders are building something special here. They are built. They, they you know, the Raiders are in a situation where one, two, three, a few good moves here and there, a few good draft picks. They have one of the most talented rosters in football at that point. So you're not going to need a Bo Nix to come in here and put this whole team on his back. Just need him to play within himself, have the arm talent and the mobility to get out of trouble and extend drives and get the ball and you know get, and get the ball to guys like Devontae Adams and Jacoby Myers. I'm telling you right now, yo. My guy Jack Burton. Never Randy, 18. Collins was never a Raider, was never a part of the nation. Yeah, Jack, I, yeah, I get that. But Antonio Brown never even suited up for us, bro. So to me, Antonio Brown is the Antichrist. F that guy. We gave a draft capital for him, man. But yeah, man, let's get, let's get to it, man. So guys, let me ask y'all a question, man. Real, real quickly, right? Let's get this thing going in the right direction, yeah? So, you know, the report came out about the Raiders moving up. Also, Mitchell Renz, shout out to Mitch, man. Mitch was saying that the Raiders were in contact with the Miami Dolphins brass about moving back up into the first round for the 21st pick. For our second, our third, and our fourth round pick. Now, let me ask you guys something. I don't, I don't know if you guys saw that down at Mitch's channel. What do you guys think about that? What, what does that let lead you to believe? Because if the Raiders do that, that means that, one, I would love that because now they have the ability to move up in this draft and go and get their guy. 
that gives them the, the, the same ability to do some of the things that are similar to what the Minnesota Vikings are trying to do, right? And also, the tab for whatever move they made to get their quarterback will be paid this year. Now, see, a lot of the reason why I tell you guys that I want us to take Penix at 13 or at 44 is because, I, I, look, I have reservations about the Raiders trading away three first-round picks in a few seconds to get one player. Because we're not one player away, right? And draft capital equals the currency of hope. Draft capital equals freedom. Draft capital equals everything in the National Football League. I mean, everything. And say, for instance, you do take a Jaden Daniels and you get your guy and everybody's happy. And then the, the, the you know, preseason happens. The first season, you know, the first game of the season starts. And then the Jaden Daniels experiment starts to careen off the cliff. And people are saying, man, what do we do? Now you're still paying. Say, for instance, he's not what you think. I'm not even talking about being an abject bust. I'm talking about him just not being what you think. Now you get hit over the head with that mistake for the next few years. And you're not able to draft your way out of the mistake. Listen, we've seen people do this before. We've seen people take a quarterback and say, hey, man, like the Bears have done. This ain't working. We're going to move on. Mitchell Trubisky, Justin Fields. We like him, but eh, Caleb Williams is better. Let's move on. And that's because they have draft capital. That is my point. So, look, the Jaden Daniels thing, if Antonio Pierce loves him, I love him. Right? When I look at him, he's an elite runner. But when I talk about pure throwing the football, I, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Running a pro-style offense, moving the pocket, accuracy, things like that, that is what I see from Michael Penix Jr. I'm going to be honest with you, man. But the good thing I'm hearing about the Raiders being fluid and trying to move up now is the fact that whatever they do, it's done this year. So if they trade away the second, third, fourth, and they don't go into 2025, I'm okay with it. As long as the tab for whatever they did to move up is paid in 2024 and and, and not beyond. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you right now. Shout out to everybody in the chat, man. My guy, MG Goshal. AP said minimum 24 points, then draft Penix. It's a fact. That is a fact, yo. Ben, what it is, man. He said, we need Jaden Daniels and Penix Jr. to go for, for TD for TD with CJ Stroud. He's on a mission. Now, guys, I know you see what the Texans are doing, right? And I know a lot of people are a little worried. I know a lot of Raider Nation is like, what about us, right? And I feel like that, too. I, I, I see what they're doing. The Texans are going to be scary the way it looks on paper. They went out there. They got C.J. Stroud, a number one receiver. They, they've located the quarterback. See, the thing about the Raiders is the Raiders and our fan base, we need to focus on what we got going on. We need to focus on going and getting our guy. And once we get our guy, then and only then can we say, all right, let's go get this person. Let's go get that person. Getting a quarterback is, is, is man, it's so important, man. It's the most important thing, man. Because once you got that quarterback, guys want to come to your team, and then that's something that you just don't have to worry about especially a quarterback on a rookie deal. That's when you roll a dice. That's when you make moves like the Texans made. But what the Raiders need to focus on is ourselves, bro. We ain't got to try to keep up with the Texans. We got to build what we got right here. I ain't worried about keeping up with them. I'm, I'm telling you right now, man. But shout out to everybody in the chat. Let me get some of these, man. My guy, Bobby Clark. Build a team like the 2001 Raiders. I feel like that's what we're somehow going for a reliable system qb good run game stellar defense we don't need a superstar um qb bobby clark man shout out to my guy bobby clark now bobby clark that was a different era of football do i think we need a defense that could stop patrick mahomes can 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 score points and can can get us to that ratio to where we can be winners yes i think that the 2001 raven metric is harder in today's football because of the way they officiate the game a way that the NFL has always officiated the Raiders. Now all these new rules, like the hip drop tackle and all these bullshit rules that they can take and, you know, kind of almost out, you know, they they, they can almost 
change the outcome of the game, right? I don't think in this era of football you can win without having zero offense like the Ravens did. The Ravens had almost zero offense. They had they had Jamal Lewis, and 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 that was pretty much it, man. They had Jamal Lewis, and that was it, bro. You had Quadri Ismail and all them guys. You know Shannon Sharp, where you know if you got a quarterback that's got you know like Trent Dilfer that's not really doing much and he's really a pedestrian quarterback, then you're not going to expect for him to light it up like that. I think the Raiders need a quarterback, man, that can score 21 to 24 points with that defense. Then that ratio gets into a winning ratio. But you definitely need to be able to slow down, you know, the guys in our division, the Herberts and the Mahomes. You, you know what I mean? Especially if you you haven't located a quarterback that's as good as them or better, which is going to be pretty damn hard. So that's one of the reasons got, they, we definitely got to lean into our defense, but we can't ignore the offensive side of the football. We got to have a way to score the football in today's NFL. It's, it's just the way the rules are and the way they officiate the games. They steer the game and they've steered the game into the offensive direction. They really have. I'm not saying it's the only thing because, you know, me, defense, defense, defense. But you cannot turn a blind eye to the offense and just put every dollar you have on a defense and say, yo, it'll be all right because we can stop everybody. Now, you got to be able to score in today's NFL. So I disagree at that point. My guy, Huncho, with the $5 holla, man, there's so many, there's so much talent in this draft. Wouldn't be mad if they got Jaden with that pick or drafted two really good rookies. Bro, listen, I told y'all, man, I am, I am fluid with my thought process on what the Raiders can do in this draft. I'm very fluid. As long as it it, it 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 nets positive gains for me and 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 us as Raider fans. See, what I don't want is is that I don't want us to have all this draft capital, like like the year we took Cleveland Farrell and we took Jonathan Abram, and it was a bit. I mean, good thing about that draft was we got Max Crosby, we got Hunter Renfro, but at the top of the draft, man, that hurt the Raiders right there. And there were guys there for them to take that right now would be still on this team right now. Right now would still be producing right now. And we might have not had to go out on free agency and address certain things. So, you know, that's that's the importance of big, you know, high round picks, man. Armar. Vincent Bonsignor tweeted that the Raiders are not going to spend all their cap money, even though they have it. The Raiders path to the draft. The path is to draft our guys and pay a couple of free agents. We need those first round picks. Now, yeah, but conversely, the metric changes if you have a chance to take a swing and get the guy that you think can lead this 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 team into the future. See, for you to move up the draft to quarterback, that means that you are convinced beyond a shadow of a doubt that that guy can be one of the best quarterbacks in the National Football League. So what what would it what what would you give to have a top ten quarterback in the National Football League? I bet every single one of you would say two first round picks in this year's draft. Every single one of you. If 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 we if we missed on every single pick but got the quarterback right beyond a shadow of a doubt, I think it's worth it. I just don't think it's worth it after this year because you do not know whether this kid is going to be any good now if he is then you can add to his greatness with your picks i mean that's that's personally how i feel i've always felt that about this and not you know i don't mean to be a broken record but my guy marcus go forth i'm starting to believe bo Nix and rattler will be the only available qbs at 13 come draft time i love all the qbs in the draft happy with either now look spencer rattler i'm not happy anything over the third round a lot of people like Spencer Rattler. He's very talented. But I don't think Spencer Rattler is a guy that could come in this year and definitely beat out Aiden O'Connell. So if you draft Spencer Rattler, buckle up and be prepared for Aiden O'Connell to be the starter. I'm telling you right now. Buckle up. And it might be a wasted pick because they they didn't draft him high enough for them to commit to him on any level, right? So – Look, man, I'm I'm praying that it's not Spencer Rattler. You know, I don't I think Spencer Rattler has some talent, but I think Spencer Rattler is going to be a guy that's going to need to develop. And and to be real with you, if I'm look, if 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 we miss on, you know, Penix or Bo Nix, 
look, man, I, I, I say just draft the best player available the whole draft. And if that best player available in that round happens to be a quarterback, then take him. My guy, A. Spivey's in the place, man. What's up, A? Ready to Rorschach's in the place, man. Wasted the GOAT. We all can say who we want at QB. To be honest, we have to give the QB they draft a chance and get behind the kid no matter what. Facts. And, and listen, that's what the organization has to do, and that's what the fan base has to do. See, we got to realize something, man. The Raiders have not taken a quarterback in a draft since, like, 2014, bro. Like, I mean, the first two rounds. But that's the year we drafted Derek Carr. And we've taken Connor Cook and guys like that, but we haven't committed to the quarterback position since 2014. It's 10 years ago. It's 10 years ago. So my mind is open for all of this. It's time for us to commit to the quarterback in a real way. My guy, Reese. I don't want to repeat the last four years of the defense getting a stop, then our offense stalling two quarters or four drives with no points. And that's a fact, bro. That's a fact, man. My guy acts wasted. Why is everybody talking about decent? F that. Get our guy, be an elite team for years to come. F those picks. Bro, listen to me. And acts, we go back and forth all the time in my comments, bro. You can't just say F them picks. That's irresponsible, bro. It's irresponsible because are you going to still have that same notion if you draft a guy and he doesn't quite work out? You got to realize the um, you got to realize the likelihood of you getting it right. Sixty percent of quarterbacks that are drafted in the first round are bust. That's that's big, bro. It's more than half. And 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 you got to be you listen. Like I said, man. If you can make the Jaden Daniels thing happen with draft capital from this year in particular, I am all for it. What I'm not for is to move into the top three and we trade away 2025, we trade away 2026, we trade away 2027. No, 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 no. That it, To me, that's too much. Sorry, bro. I'm sorry. Maybe if you go into 2025, I'm okay with it. Maybe. But anything past two years, bro, that's too far. Because now you can't you can't climb your way out of that mistake. Then, then you got to pray some shit happens like Brock Purdy. Like, like, what's the likelihood of that happening to us? You know how lucky the 49ers are right now that Brock Purdy is actually a player? After they moved up for Trey Lance and traded half the free world for that guy? Yeah, we got over 700 of y'all in the room. Get wasted with your brother wasted. Tell a friend to tell a friend. The Chargers have looked scary as hell on paper for the last five seasons. So what? Reality is different. Our time will come. Is, is our time is coming, Raider Nation for life. You got all of those OJB. I don't know. You must got like emojis. I can't see that shit. But our time is coming, bro. I feel you, bro. <laughs> My guy, G. Cole, I'd rather have Travis than Rattler and Knicks. Listen, Jordan Travis is super athletic. If Jordan Travis was healthy, man, I, I would have him pretty high. I like Jordan Travis. He's very athletic. He, he can sling it. I like Jordan Travis. But Jordan Travis is, is, is coming off of an injury that looked Joe Theismann-esque. And it just happened in November. So I don't foresee him playing anytime soon. And I want somebody that's going to be in camp ready to roll, man. I'm going to be honest with you. My guy Black Sales is in a place, man. Thank you for the $5 holler, bro. Salute wasted. I think it would be way more beneficial for us to stay at 13 and watch a top-tier player fall into our lap. Bro, I, listen, Black Sales, I'm going to be honest with you, bro. We're going to go through the draft. See, because the draft is a fluid thing, right? It all depends. There are a lot of teams, right, that would draft Michael Pennis Jr., but the teams that need Michael Penix Jr. are mostly at the top of the draft already. And there's so many quarterbacks that are draftable that I don't know. We know Denver is right ahead of us. They need a quarterback. You know, Minnesota's jockeying to get a quarterback. New England, say what you will, they need a quarterback. Are they going to draft one this year? Who knows? The Skins need a quarterback. Well, the Commanders need a quarterback. The Bears need a quarterback. We need a quarterback. Atlanta could draft a quarterback. Atlanta's the kind of team that would take a, a Spencer Rattler because they have an incumbent starter right now. They went out and spent a lot of money for Kirk Cousins. 
So I don't think that Atlanta's going to be a team that's going to do that. The, the Browns can't do that. They have Jameis Winston. They got Deshaun Watson. They got all these guys, the DTR, right? The Colts can't do that. The Colts just drafted a kid last year. The Texans don't want to. They got their guy. The Bengals, they got their guy. The Bills got their guy. The Jets might want to, but they can't. They got to put all their chips on the table with Aaron Rodgers. A. a Ron is there. To attack via lower, he might not be their guy going forward, but they got to see what they got with him. The New York Giants, same thing with Daniel Jones. They might want to draft a quarterback. They can't. They can't. They need to improve that roster now, or the two guys who are there are not going to have a job. The ball and all of those guys, they're not going to have a job. The Packers aren't drafting a quarterback. Like, catch my job. I know I'm jumping all around the league. The Saints have committed to Derek Carter, not drafting a the quarterback. They're in the same conundrum that we were in. They, you know, the Saints aren't drafting nobody. Yo, Baker Mayfield is in a place down there in Tampa Bay. He's their guy. The Rams might need to draft a young quarterback. They got Stetson Bennett. But, yo, they got Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford's their guy. Jared Goff is Detroit's guy. You guys see how this is shaping up? Arizona. Kyler Murray, they're committed to Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray ain't going nowhere. And if he does, then great. The Steelers just went out there and got two quarterbacks. They ain't drafting nobody in the first round. The Ravens got the reigning MVP. They're cool. They're cool. You got see, to see where this is going right here. So there aren't a lot of teams that are going to swoop in and take Michael Penis Jr., right? So this is the reason why I feel like, yo, you could get a Knicks or Penix at 13. Now, where it gets a little tricky is the fact that some of those teams that need one, some of those teams that need one are ahead of us, the Vikings and the damn Denver Broncos. And that's going to be spooky. It's going to be spooky. I ain't going to lie. Chargers don't need a quarterback. They got Justin Herbert. They're good. Shout out to everybody in the room, man. Hug D's in a place to be with the $5 holler, man. With our defense, young and hungry, young playmakers on offense, the time is now to get our QB. Bet the farm on the 40% of the QBs that are special. That's a fact. And I'm not even talking about special, Hug. There's only 5% that are special, bro. 5 to 10%, bro. And that's being generous. You got some that are drafted high that just become kind of mid, right? But, you know, we saying that from a fan perspective, right? But at the end of the day, if you think it from a GM's perspective, Tom Telesco, if he's shown us nothing, he's not willing to overpay. He's not willing to put the Raiders in a bad situation going forward for nothing. And I trust his judgment. I, I like his judgment so far. My guy Raider Biggs, there's only six QBs in the NFL that start that weren't first round picks. 26 were drafted in the first round. Odds are we need to draft a first round QB. Raider Biggs, that is my point. But the thing is, drafting the first round QB is cool, but you got to draft the right QB, right? So my thing is, is that, yo, listen, I, I'm cool with moving to seven or eight, right? If I get rid of my second round pick and I got to move to eight, nine, it's whatever, but I don't want to have to to get into the top three. I don't want to trade away. You know the, the the next you know quarter decade to get up there, Mister Cold Blooded. I don't know why these Raider fans can understand that we are not the only team looking for a QB, and we don't need to give up the farm to try to get one. Just stay true to the board and just chillax. And that's really what I'm saying. You got to stay true to the board. You don't want to go into this thing guns are blazing. Now, if you can kind of craft a trade like we spoke about earlier, where you can get two first round picks so that that kind of puts you in a situation where the tab for the move you make up this year will be paid that tab will be paid this year and i'm with that but anything more than that i, I got a problem man my guy alpha omega miss said we tried to make a trade yeah i spoke about that early alpha omega with the dolphins to get an extra first round pick and the 2024 drop yes yes i spoke about that early man shout out to mitchell Renz, yo. Michael, my guy, Big Mike, bro, Bo Nix, Michael Pennis Jr. Their draft stack is confusing to figure out. If the board dictates four QBs off the board, the first 10 picks, do you move up to nine to pick up one of those two QBs? I think you might have to, Mike, 
because we have two teams ahead of us. And this all depends because if that fourth quarterback is taken by the Minnesota Vikings, now you have to make sure that you put yourself in position to get the guy you want and not the table scraps off of what the Broncos get. It's a division rival. Then now the stakes get high because you don't want to see the guy you wanted starting for your division rival two games a year, beating you for the foreseeable future. So now, now it's fluid. Now the cost isn't as high to move up. With the amount of QBs, I wouldn't just assume teams aren't putting value and have reliable backups on rookie deals. Bruh, come on, dog. Nobody is putting a first-round grade on a backup. That That's organizational malpractice, Bobby Clark. That's not happening, bro. Get the F out of here with that Knicks coming to the Raiders crap, please. Why are you feeling this and bringing this up, Supreme Talent? Bro, I have to bring up the reality of it. The reality is, if if, if Caleb's gone, Penix is gone, Daniels is gone, May is gone, McCarthy's gone, they're all gone, and he's there at 44, if you don't take him, you're making a grave mistake. You got to take him at that point. Why wouldn't you take a guy like Bo Nix? I, listen, is he my first choice? No. But, Joe, if I've already taken a Terry on Arnold and the draft board goes the way that we think it could go, and he's there in the second round and we still got our second round, you can fucking take him. Take him. My opinion, two years been saying it's Bo Nix. I feel you, man. Raiders Guru. Now, that, you know, I'm glad you pulled up in here. Raider Guru. I am glad you pulled up in here. It's been talking slick. Talking crazy in my comments. I am so glad you pulled up in here, Raider Guru. I meant to respond to you the other day, but I was working. Look, Raider Guru, I'm going I'm to be honest with you, bro. There's a chance that a a a o four could start. But if a o four is your starter, and you didn't go out there and try to address this quarterback thing in a real way, that means you failed. You failed. And when we talk about A04, comparing him to Michael Penix Jr., there is no comparison to me. Michael Penix Jr. is a better is, 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 is a better prospect than A04, bro. It's a better prospect, bro. I, I don't see how you can say that he's not, bro. The, the guy's... Like, I don't, like, bro, I, I don't know if you guys watch this guy. You got some people that talk about the injury shit, bro. Yo, he's not the first person that's been injured in college at a young age, and he ain't the last. And this is a different era, bro. When you have situations, lower extremity injuries, the medicine, the things they have now, most of the time with quarterbacks, when they get ACLs and stuff like that, they heal, and then they're fine, and they never get injured again. It's almost like the, the new Tommy John surgery for pitchers in Major League Baseball. So for me, bro, I, I, if if we go, I, I'll, I'll get behind Aiden O'Connell. I think Aiden O'Connell has a lot of talent, but I'm going to be honest with you. Michael Penix Jr. is a way better prospect, and if you have a chance to draft him, I can never sit up here and say, take a lineman and and, and leave that kind of arm talent on the board, bro. No way, no way, bro. No effing way. GMs pay that stuff attention, bro. But, yo, this is the thing. His medicals have checked out clean. This is not an issue at this point for him. His medicals check out clean. Bro, if if you go to the draft and you go to the senior bowl and you go through all of the, you know, you go to the combine, if there was a glaring issue with Michael Penix Jr., it would have come out already. Tell me right now, bro. But yo, I respect I respect what you're saying, bro. But listen, bro, I, I can't sit up here and say that I'm okay with us going into the season with Aiden O'Connell. He has to show me a lot in preseason, and he has to really beat out Gardner Minshew, beat out this one. Beat it's a lot for me being okay with him being a starter, bro. He got to show me a lot, bro. Ace hey, Spivey, Fuaga got thirteen all the way. Best QB left at 44, beef up the defense, the rest of the draft. 
hey, Spivey, I feel you, bro. But I'm going to be honest with you, bro. If, if, look, you cannot, and guys, I look, I don't mean to sound like a broken record, but yo, you cannot, cannot pass on, 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 on the QB talent we got. Now, guys, I'm going to be honest with you. The Raiders had their top 30 visits today, and we're going to go in. We're going to get into that, man. Yo, shout out to my guy, um, Raider Scout, man. But Raider Scout said that the Raiders had top 30 visits with, and this is going to make a lot of y'all happy, Jordan Travis from Florida State. Uh, Bo Nix, Oregon. Michael Penix Jr. Michael Harris from Sanford. Brendan Rice from USC. Jake Johanna from Furman. Garrett Greenfield from South Dakota State. Alignment. Uh, Byron Murphy from Texas. Makai Wingo from LSU. That's a big, that's a name that, that I like, man. Jalen Allen from Memphis. Amari Gaynor from UNC, Jaquan Shepard, cornerback out of Maryland. You know, uh, listen, we 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 did that last year, right? Maryland with that speed, they got a nice little uh, they got a nice little consortium of of, of corners down there in Maryland. Um, Omar Brown from Nebraska, another cornerback. Um, Trey Taylor from Ohio State, and Julius Woods from Eastern Coastal Carolina, man. So, yo, the Raiders have brought in. Travis, Knicks, Penix, and Michael Harris. So that lets you know that the Raiders are definitely heavy on that, that position. Definitely heavy. My guy, Ira Jackson, with the $50 holler. Appreciate you, bro, for keeping the lights on here at Raider Nation Unlimited, bro. Whoever we get at QB, hope he fits the system, we are running. And that, Ira, that's all I care about, bro. Like, we have the guys that we like we watched in college, but for me, it's mostly... Who fits Gassy's system? Who's going to do the best when they get here? Who's going to pick the system up? Who's going to fit in with the locker room? All of those things are very relevant. So the guys that we might like might not be who Telesco and AP likes. And I'm all right with it. As long as they go out there and address, they have to address the quarterback position in this draft in a real way, and they got to do it early. Eli W. Penix is good when it's o line could bully the opponent. We saw what happened against Michigan. He threw 11 picks and had a clean pocket all year. Bro, he threw the ball a lot. Michigan was a team that was loaded. It's one of the best college football teams I've seen in recent memory. To me, that whole you saw how he played against Michigan shit doesn't hold water against how he's played his entire career. Any quarterback that's under duress and get hit has an issue. Any quarterback. Shit, Brett Favre when he used to get hit. You know, he's a tough son of a bitch. He would throw picks. And, you know, listen, it's all about protecting the quarterback, bro. That's not just Jermaine to Michael Penix Jr. It's like, come on, y'all. See, this is the problem with a lot of people. I'm telling you what I know from breaking down tape and actually doing the work and watching whole games, watching, you know, film on Michael Penix, watching, yo, snaps from when he was at Indiana, watching, you know, stuff from the season last year. I've been scouting Michael Penix Jr. for two years. I'm telling y'all, bro, he is a lot better than y'all giving him credit for because a lot of y'all have only seen highlights and y'all saw the Michigan game and that's it. Now, I remember, bro, after yo after the game previous to that, everybody and their mother wanted to take him. What happened? Don't be a prisoner of the moment. Joshy e. B, this fan base will instantly turn on AP if we roll AO4 next year. Nah, that's subjective, bro. Because if you roll with AO4 all next year and they win, that's different. Then everybody's cool, right? Shout out to everybody on Twitter, too. Yo, if y'all are on Twitter or you guys are here at Radio Nation Unlimited, yo, we do live content. We do shorts. We do it all over here, man. Members. Got some members things going. Guys, let me tell you something. This is the place to be. Make sure you hit the subscribe button on Twitter, at PodWasted, on X formerly known as Twitter, or at Wasted Talent Raiders on YouTube. Real Talk Raider Nation. Wasted. You got to understand that a good prospect don't matter if it don't fit the system and the coaching can't develop into a successful QB. Tom Brady, a top prospect. Patrick Mahomes, negative. Bro, and this is, bro, you got to understand something. This is a gospel that I've been preaching, Real Talk Raider Nation. The thing about it is, is this. People, places, and things. You look at a guy like Penix, 
You look at what the Raiders have here. This is the perfect situation for him. Comes in here. A lot of people say, oh, he was made by Roma Desi. He comes in and improves on that by playing with Jacoby Myers, playing with Devontae Adams and Michael Mayers. Now you got a better offense. And not for nothing, the Raiders are – yo, the Raiders have a decent offensive line even with what we got in the building. I like Colton Miller. Andre James isn't the best center, but he's not terrible. Andre James is one of the better centers in the league, believe it or not. And, and also, believe it or not, we got over 800 in the room. Yo, Dylan Parham, good young guard. Thayer Mumford can be another young guard and or right tackle. So the Raiders are not devoid of talent in the offensive line. I think this is the – listen, I, if, if, if you're talking Michael Penix Jr. going to one of the worst teams in the league that's devoid of talent, I, that might not be the best spot for him. But a guy who's played in a pro-style offense, who has accuracy, has a great arm, great touch, coming to a situation like this, this is a nothing but nothing but right as far as I'm concerned, man. Oh, the great and powerful Hammer's in a place to be. Where you been, Hammer? Shout out to everybody. My guy, Ira Jackson, blessing us with a 50-burger again. Golly, thank, 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 thank you, Ira Jackson, man. Appreciate you, bro, for keeping the lights on over here, man. The top QBs, everyone blowing up, might not pan out in the NFL. Just like drafting center and making him a right guard. Get the QB we need, Ira Jackson, and that is what I'm saying. And I believe that Penix is the guy we need, personally. And I like Bo Nix, too. I am not. I wouldn't be as excited about him if we got him in the second round. The first round, I don't really want a Bo Nix in the first round, I, if, I, if I'm being honest, man. I'm sorry, man. Let me see, man. I think, did I miss anybody, man? No, 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 no. Raider Felon, wait till you skip my super chat, my boy. Love the show, no diddy. Oh, no, let me go back, bro. Where you at, Raider Felon? My bad, bro. You know the old man be missing stuff, brother. My guy, Raider Felon with the $5 holler, man. Appreciate you. Let the other teams reach for a QB. The Raiders shouldn't reach and draft a QB. That's not a top three. Build the trenches, fill the holes, pause, draft a mid-round QB. Now look, bro, Raider Felon. Cannot go into this draft with another with another mid round talent. You just you can't. If you're gonna draft somebody in the mid rounds and hang your your future on them, then you might as well keep Aiden O'Connor. That's the way I view it. You might as well keep Aiden O'Connor. You draft a mid round QB out of pure necessity, bro. It's my personal opinion, my brother. Much love to my brother Raider Felon, man. Appreciate you, man. My guy, Eddie Rodriguez, the coldest line ever. And I got to let this man, oh, my God, man. I let that man cook. Oh, this man said, fill my holes with Penix. Nasty, disgusting work, but it means exactly. <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say here, bro. I thought he said we should fill the holes with pennies, but he said fill his holes with pennies. That is a pause. Get the F out of here, Eddie Rodriguez. That You know what? Listen, I'm taking away that let that man cook. I didn't read that properly, man. Angry man. What you doing here? Man, sit your ass down. Oh, Eddie Rodriguez, sit your ass down with that comment, man. The F is wrong with you. <laughs> The F is wrong with you, Eddie. Oh, my gosh. This man is out here flagrant right here with this Penix talk. <laughs> Rub Raiders. Yo, shout out to my guy, man. <laughs> Rub Raiders, you're wasted. Assuming JD is not available, why not take Penix at 13? And then spend the draft capital that we're going to use on JD by trading back into the first. That's Rum Raiders. Thank you, Rum Raiders. Thank you. Somebody has been listening to me. Somebody's been listening to me, man. God! Wow! Thank you. This is exactly what I'm saying ver effing batum for weeks now. Take your quarterback first. Oh, my God. Thank you. The great and powerful Ruben Rust is in here. He is now 
He, the artist formerly known as Ruben Russ has now become George Halani with the Fight Al Holly, yo. We draft Penix. I hope they move Parham to right guard. We play way better. Get a young left guard next to Colton and let Dylan and, Mu- and Mufford on the right. That'd be that's a great idea. Ruben Russ, you are, you have not got me fooled. You are not George Halani. Even though you were definitely his agent or, or, or the president of his fan club. Ruben Russ, shout out to you and thank you for always supporting Raider Nation Unlimited. Bro, I, I wouldn't be mad at that. Take apart him and put him back at right guard. I would not be mad at that. Because now, what you've done is if you do draft, say for instance, as a left guard, what you've done is you've insulated him with the two most senior guys on this line again. So now you got Colton Miller. You got Andre James, and they're protecting the young pup. Then on the other side of the line, youth. Love it, man. Wait a second. Who's your favorite Simone? Man, this is very, very. No, I mean, listen. I, I don't necessarily know about, you know, I, I know Fawaga's a beast. You know what I'm saying? But I don't like to. to, to you know what I'm saying? That the judge draft picks based off of where they come from or they, you know, ethnic background. But that's like asking, like, you know, uh, who's your favorite black dude in the draft? Like, come on, dog. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I like Fawai because he's a beast, though. I, I probably should even answer that. But, yo. Wait a minute. Mike, Jenny Castillo, right on board. Fill those, fill the holes. That's what she said. That is what she said. Bang, zoom. Bang, zoom. Bang! Zoom, Jenny Castillo. <laughs> oh my God, yo, y'all look crazy, man. <laughs> Pulley face. <laughs> yo, that's right. That is right, Jenny Castillo. <laughs> Yo, Coach Evan Java is destroyed. Oh my God, we yeah, we're going full on uh, Chappelle racial draft. What the f are y'all talking? about? Who's my favorite black dude? I'm not answering that. Get the f out of here. Black plague. That's exactly what I do about mock drafts. At least we have the QP covered. Trade back for more picks. Then even double what we did with all those picks and get Jordan if you want to. Black hole play. That's what I do too, bro. Oh my God. See this is this this is this is a a a a a a woman here, a very knowledgeable woman. I sis elite. She was Penix has big hands. He could fill many holes, many women's holes. We are not worried about this. Elite, what the f is wrong with you? The f is wrong with you, elite. You guys are going to the gutter with this show. It's becoming an open mic night here. Raider Roy Shack, yo. <laughs> I got a real Raider Bad Dad. Guess not every Super Jet gets talked about. That's too bad. Okay, four Super Chats, only one got talked about. Maybe Mitch is right about that age. Get the F out of here, Bad Dad. Effing Bad Dad. Listen, you got to understand something. I am running a show right here, brother. So, Bad Dad, it will be talked about. And guess what? The old man probably missed it. Wait, gave a 10-hour super chat. You passed me by <laughs> like Kobe and his bullhog days. They, they were, yo, come on, bad dad. I ain't passed you by, brother. I got to just get back to it. Here we go. JD has the potential to be next level like Lamar. Flip side, MJP showed me a clean bill of health at his pro day. Minus his injury history, I think he beats out May as a top three still at 13. And see, Raider, bad dad, and this is what I'm talking about, is value. If if I can stand pat and I can take my guy at 13 and I don't have to move up, let's just say in a perfect world, I don't got to move, I don't got to get no draft picks, none of that. That is the goal, bro. That is the, 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 the goal because now if that pick doesn't work out, I've wasted one draft pick. If I move up and the pick doesn't work out, I've wasted many picks. It's not just where you took them in the first round. It's not just the bad contract. It's the fact that I've burnt more picks. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that we support this guy with as much talent around him with guys with good contracts so you can keep that nucleus together. So when I draft a quarterback, I want to draft a quarterback and then have a draft class around him to support said quarterback. 
i.e. with Carr and, and, and Khalil Mack and Gabe Jackson. You, you understand what I'm saying? But that's where I am. That's where I'm at with mine. But thank you, bro. Appreciate you for supporting the channel. Every super chat gets talked about. See, you got to understand when the super chat comes, I read the ones that are in the flow of what we talk about. Then we go right back, my brother. Appreciate you, bro, for supporting the channel. My guy Ridge, what that is? Hey, wasted. Is this the year we double down on QBs like the Redskins did? Take one at thirteen and then draft Jordan Travis, assuming he's there in the fourth round. We could develop the Fuller State kid. I hope they do. I hope they do, bro. Because look, man, when you double up, like what happened with the 49ers. They moved up. They got their guy in Trey Lance. Then at the last pick of the draft, they took Brock Purdy. And guess who's starting for him right now? Brock Purdy. You look at the Redskins. They took RG3. RG3 was looking like a beast. He was a beast. Who's still in the NFL playing and balling and making more money than anybody? Kirk Cousins. You like that. You remember that? So I have no problem with that, y'all. Shit, I would like him to take Joe Milton. Listen, man, I'm telling you right now, man. Hug these. I scrolled down the chat and thought it was a penthouse letters episode. Yes, it's un unbelievable in here, man. Somebody's about to get themselves unceremoniously blocked with all this Penix talk, man. <laughs> Lose Barrios, Couch GM. Stop listening to people, quote unquote, car fans. That have been wrong in the past. Bo Nix, Rattler, they will have to sit and our team will be in mediocrity. Hey, man, I, I see where you're coming from, bro. Ben Bad is in the place. <laughs> ben Bad is in the place. The Penix train is going off the track. Oh, my God, Ira Jackson blessing this show again with a hundred piece, man. For the lights, I'm out to cut the yard before I get to Ira Jackson, man. Thank you. Appreciate you, bro. You, bro. You have just came in here with the Mitchell Wrench. Bang! With the honey piece. Shout out to Ira Jackson, man. Thank you, bro, for supporting this channel, bro. Oh, my God. Ira Jackson, man. Yo, Ira Jackson, I'm going to tell you something, man. I wish I could send somebody to cut your grass for you, my brother. Shout out to my guy, Ira Jackson. We got to give him. Yo, look. I got to give him the Mitchell Wrench treatment over here. Bang! He goes in the Hall of Fame, Ira Jackson, man. Thank you, my brother. Listen to that. All of <laughs> Yo, salute to Ira Jackson in a place, man. My God, man. Shout out to Ira Jackson, man. Shout out to Ira Jackson, man. Thank you, bro. Appreciate you, brother, for, for supporting this channel like this, man. Thank you. Hakeem, Hakeem Boxing. We are in a QB away from a bowl. We need to build the trenches. I mean, Hakeem boxing. I think we are building the trenches. We went out there. Our, our number one free agent acquisition has been the trenches. Uh, we've drafted a multitude of guys in the last two years for the trenches. Byron Young and all these guys, Matthew Butler. We went and signed Adam Butler. We signed Jack, you know, John Jenkins back. We we've invested in the trenches. We went out there and we made sure that we brought, you know, Andre James back. We let Greg Van Roten walk. We got Dylan Parham. We got Thayer. You know? Ira Jackson with another 100 p Oh, my God. Thank you, brother. Thank you. But no one can cut like me. No. Pause. No. Bang! Another one. Ira Jackson is a... Yo, Ira Jackson, thank you, my brother. Yeah, bro. Yeah, look, I know. I'm going to be honest with you, bro. I pay... Look. Bro, look, I'm going to have to, listen, bro, I'm going to have to take a shot like Mitch. It's not going to be a shot of liquor. It's going to be a shot of coffee, man. Thank you, Ira Jackson, for keeping the lights on over here. I'm going to go with the bang. Oh, my God. But thank you. Thank you, my brother. Appreciate you. 
<laughs> my guy, Rich, man, going to have a boot filled with iced tea. We're wasted, man. My guy, A. Spivey, adding to the wasted talent army with five Raider Nation. Man, guys, Jesus, you guys have been so good. Thank you, guys, man. Unbelievable, man. Unbelievable, man. Thank you, man. My guy, Hakeem Boxing, yo. Hey, Spivey, thank you, bro, for, for keeping the lights on here at Radio Nation Unlimited, bro. It's greatly, greatly appreciated, man. My my guy, I meant O-line. Thayer isn't a starter. The only legit, legit tackle is Colt Miller if he isn't injured. We down bad. No, we not. And Thayer Mufford could possibly be a starter. Thayer Mufford played great at left tackle, and, and he played even better. He, he played better at left tackle than he did at right. But Thayer Mufford played really well at right tackle. Thayer Mufford is a young player, bro. You see... Everybody always wants to go out and address needs with either the currency of hope or they want to go on free agency and, and, and just, you know, free agency is cool. But just the thing y'all got to understand when you draft these guys, if they don't come into the league and they're not turning into somebody who is like a freaking superstar right off the bat, you got to give these guys a space to develop. Give these guys the space to develop, bro. Thayer Mufford did nothing to where he shouldn't be in the plans for the Raiders. He he please played well, bro. And he's still in a rookie deal, bro. You got you gotta let him, man. Th Yo. Raider Deb, thank you, Ace Spivey. Appreciate it. Thank oh, LBC Raider. Gifting five Raider Nation, man, unlimited memberships. Man, thank you, bro. Thank you, man. Josh Chopper. Becoming a member of the Wasted Town Army. Everybody, yo, everybody's becoming a member now. I think I'm about to do a member. My next live will be a members only one, man. Alan Maxwell. See, if we don't get solid depth on the O-line, a young QB is going to be in trouble. See, this is the thing, Alan. We are in position to get depth. But the thing is, is that what people are looking at is that this is one of the best mm -hmm. Offensive line drafts in recent memory. You can get great value second, third, fourth, fifth round in this draft. There, there are a lot of freaking linemen in this draft. So if you go out there and you address the quarterback and then you go and you just load up that offensive lineman room, it can happen. And then after you've addressed your need at quarterback, you can go and scour the waiver wires. You can go and scour some of these free agents that are still available. So, like, guys, it, everybody, you you, you got to realize something, man. It's it's value. When, when you sit up here and you look, the thing that is most valuable to us, most valuable to us is getting a, a, a guy that is a starting quarterback, upper crust, top-level quarterback. It's easier to go out and address the offensive line than it is to address a quarterback. A, getting a quarterback... You almost never get a quarterback that's worth his salt in the National Football League by trade or free agency. Almost never. If you want to go and you want to win, you win by going and drafting your guy. Now, I've seen Matthew Stafford go and do what he did, but that was because the Rams went all out and now they're in salary cap hell and they're trying to climb out of it. Most of the time, you win by drafting your guy and outfitting the team with talent when that quarterback is on a rookie deal. A.J. Simpson, what if Mumford is just one of the best swing tackles in the league? God forbid, Colton gets hurt. But we have a B-level starter as a backup and left in Mumford. Yo, bro, that is a great, great, it's a great thing. Having a swing tackle, that that's a skill set like being a switch hitter in baseball. That's a, that's, that is an acquired, acquired skill set. Everybody can't do it. You know, shout out to Denzel Good. Denzel Good was a guy who did it for us at a very high level, right? Denzel Good has done that. That was one of his superpowers in the NFL. He can play pretty much every position off his line, right? We've had Carl Khalif Barnes. Shout out to Khalif Barnes. But I'm going to tell you something, man. That If they're Mumford, because it looks like he has that superpower. If, if he's a swing tackle, great. Then that means that we have a better option starting over him. And that's good for us. But you don't have to address that need in the first round. Listen, man. It's like a match made in Vegas heaven. Hooker and Penix belong in Vegas. Unbelievable. Bang Zoom. 
Bang Zoom IT. Bang Zoom. At 13, every other QB in a draft is a reach. If we trade up, cool. Trade up for who? If we trade up to three, the drop off is big. Drake, Caleb, Jaden, then drop off. See, that's your opinion, bro. I don't feel like the the. I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I think Michael Penix Jr. is is better than Drake May. I do. The the jury's out on Jaden Daniels. I don't know if he's better than Jaden Daniels, right? Or Caleb, but I think he's better than Drake. And I think J.J. McCarthy is just as good as Drake. I, I think you're underselling a lot of these guys, brother. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, you know, a hundred percent real with you. I think you, I think you are underselling these guys, man. Ready to play? This is probably the deepest pause draft we've had in years. A lot of positions, so no need to go crazy giving up picks. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. Y'all gotta understand something. You have a draft where you have a lot of guys who are in their sixth year playing college football because of the COVID year. You know, that I think this might be the last year of the COVID, the, the guys who played an extra year or sat out the COVID year, this might be the last year of that. So you have a deep draft. You have guys that probably should be in the NFL now. So you got a very, very deep draft, guys. you got a very deep draft. And a lot of guys are not running to the NFL because of the NIL stuff. They're able to sit there and develop their skill set in a better way. So, guys, you, you could get great value. These picks, when people start talking about, you know, giving up thirds and fourths and stuff like that. Yeah, if I got to do it to get my, my my starter, yeah. But I'm going to be honest with you guys. This is the kind of draft. That's why I'm hoping our quarterback falls to us where we are and we don't got to move too far because I want to make sure that we have a full myriad of talent and picks, man. <laughs> my guy, Bridgeback, hooker with the Penix on the team. Next thing you know, the NFL will be playing games in Thailand. Oh my oh god. Oh the F out of here, Ridgeback. Ridgeback. I thought I thought better of you, Ridgeback. What the F are you doing here? <laughs> my God. Ready. My God, ready guru. MJP is the best quarterback in the draft. We just don't need him. You are guru. 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 My brother. Guru, you are tweaking, bro. Come on, Guru. You better than that, Guru. We need him, bro. Come on, man. Wade with the braid. <laughs> Phoenix pocket awareness is next level. He moves so well within the pocket. He definitely does. Yo, you guys, yo, we talking about what is going on? Listen, this show has come off the rail. You guys are trying to get. I never thought the Wasted Talent Army would get me canceled. I never, ever, ever thought, man. But damn, man. See? God! Wow! What the F is going on here today? <laughs> oh, my God, man. My God, Solomon Mitchell. I agree. Penix is better than Drake May every day, man. Now, I think that Drake May has some athletic, his athletic abilities off the charts, man. But, yeah, as a quarterback, yeah, man. They say y'all are causing wasted pain with your wayward opinions. No, no, it's not pain, bro. Listen, that's what the, that's what builds the show, man. That's what builds the show, man. <laughs> Yo, listen, we got eight hundred and forty-eight in the house, y'all. Hit that thumbs up, man. And y'all get off. Get, whoever's watching, who's ever watching, he said, "Do Gruden." No, man, come on, man. This, this is not a Gruden show right now. But guys, listen, man. I'm gonna ask you guys something. Really quickly, before I leave, man. My guy, A. Spivey. I keep waiting for Walt to jump in. I've been waiting for Walt to jump in, too. Legend has it that Walt is still waiting to make his pick. Legend has it Walt is still waiting to make his pick. Yo, shout out to Walt. Shout out to my guy, man. My guy, Corey, man. Correct the Fellow Podcast. Yo, go check my guy out, man, on Twitter, man. Go subscribe to him. Go pick up the book. Yo, my man Corey is an author now, man. Shout out to Corey, bro. Peace, my brother. I hear all this Raiders talk, but next season, every knee will bow to the Detroit Lions. Man, get the F out of here, Corey, with all this Detroit Lions talk. Get the F out of here with all of that. Corey, shout out to you, bro. That's my dog, man. Appreciate you. 
Listen, I'll allow it just because it's you, my brother. Shout out to my bro, Corey, man. This is my dog in real life, man. <laughs> Y'all crazy, man. Yo, hug these. I'm not even putting that up, man. I'm not even putting that up. See, I was about to bring the train into the tracks, man. Because listen, man. <laughs> this has been a wonderful, wonderful show, man. My guy, Dennis Ortiz. Good show, bro. Thank you, man. Yo, they said Walt is kicking people off his lawn as we speak. Everybody, shout out to the Wasted Town Army. Shout out to the generals of the Get Off My Lawn Gang, Ben Bad, T Sir, all of the guys, man. Yo, shout out to everybody, man. Shout out to, to the great and powerful Ira Jackson, bro. This man came and just blessed this show today, man, with his greatness, man. Thank you to the great and powerful Ira Jackson. But guys, we are going to get out of here, man. Shout out to everybody out there, man. We will be going live. I'm getting back on my regular schedule here. We will be going live again. Uh, I don't know this weekend, but Monday we will be back at it, man. Shout out to y'all. Yo, shout out to my guy, Raider Guru, man. Appreciate you for all of the um the banter and the support, man. Shout out to everybody in chat. My brother, Hug D's, A Spivey, um, Sweeney, all these guys, man. My opinion. Shout out to y'all. Later, Nation. But I'm going to read this last one, my guy, Raider Guru, man. TT is a good quarterback in town, Scott. We know that he is one. He's the one that's going to go with AO4. I, I don't agree, Guru. I, I think that's why all these things are happening behind the scenes and them trying to move up. They definitely want a quarterback, my brother. But, guys, listen. We're going to get out of here. I appreciate everything that you guys have done for this platform and this show. Please pull up later, man. My guy, A Spivey, man. And, yo, look, y'all already know. I'm corny. I'm going to do it the same thing every day, but y'all love it, man. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Wait a minute. 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 Nope. Same old shit. Yesterday's price is not today's price. Price is going up by the daily. See you guys next Raider Nation Unlimited, man. I appreciate everything, man. See y'all probably on Monday, man. But if not Monday, we'll be pulling up this weekend as well, man. Peace, y'all.